All right. Joseph Prince, we're toward the end of this article. He brings up so many things. It takes so much time for preparation. I haven't prepared enough. Uh, he, he talks about true grace teaches progressive sanctification. A couple of notes there. Progressive sanctification, those words don't appear in Scripture. And true grace, it's either grace or it isn't. Grace is unmerited favor, usually, almost always, God providing a blessing or favor toward his uh, believer or in other circumstances that they don't deserve, unmerited. Progressive sanctification. Well, there's no true grace or false grace, and grace is just God's unmerited favor. Just because you get a, a favor from God doesn't mean you're going to grow into faith uh, in, in this temporal life. It's an up and down thing. Well, we'll, we'll see that comment uh, later on. Let's go back to where I was walking through my own study on First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians, on uh, First John, uh, chapter one, uh, First John, chapter one through five. Uh, well, I'm going to go uh, to First John, chapter one, verse five. So as we walk our way through in the study done in consistency, rather than bounce all around like uh, Joseph. Prince is trying to uh, do, uh, there's no uh, consistency here. To read God's word, you have to read it and understand it in the order that it was written. So here we go. We've worked our way down 1 through 4. Here's 1 John 1, 5. In verse 5, John emphasized an extremely important point about the message of how to have fellowship with the apostles and with God the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. That God is light. And in him, there is absolutely no darkness, no evil at all. On the other hand, God's light exposes his creation and reveals that man is inherently evil and cannot have fellowship with a holy God. A holy God who is absolutely righteous. So the fellowship each individual man could have had, could, have, could only be through God's provision alone, whereby man, and it's grace provision, whereby man can be purified from all unrighteousness by God himself. Okay. And this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Well, we have some manuscript discrepancies, but they're non, not consequential. In any case, relative to this verse, Author John writes, God is light, meaning that God is characterized by light, light in the sense of a light which is absolutely pure, absolute righteousness, absolute purity, absolute holiness, absolute truth, absolute splendor, absolute glory, and so on. That is what God is characterized by. And then, to make this first statement in verse 5 more emphatic, author John writes, and in him is no darkness at all. A lot of people out there are leaning in the direction of the Bible, either to crit critique it or revamp it, but there is no darkness at all. Darkness here is the opposite of the light that characterizes God, mutually exclusive of that light and of who God is. The light of God reveals the darkness which is in man, all men. Their sinful characters and the evil that they constantly do all men except God the Son, Jesus Christ, in his humanity. And most of all of this darkness has in view that men tended to remain willfully ignorant of who God is. Who he really is. The light of his absolute righteousness. Throughout history, all men have demonstrated that they love darkness, evil, and choose to dwell in it instead of in the light, the righteousness of God. This darkness is sin, evil, unrighteousness, which has no part of who God is and what he does. Because this darkness pervades the character of all men, 
All of mankind has a problem with who God is because no man is capable of being as righteous as God is righteous. All men, even children of God, born of God, even apostles are inherently evil and incapable in and of themselves of having fellowship with God, yet all men ten willfully tend to remain ignorant of who God is. So, thinking of what we're just talking about, true, true grace teaches progressive sanctification. Well, th that's not what 1 John 1, 5 says. And leading up to that, 6, 7, 8, and 9, the light of God's absolute righteousness has been testified to from the beginning of creation and throughout the ages by observing creation and what the prophets of old said and did, especially as recorded in Scripture by what the apostles said and did, especially as recorded in the Scripture, most particularly what they wrote of the, life, the word of life, Jesus Christ, God the Son, as to what they heard and observed him say and do and in their writings that comprise the New Testament books. So you have to read this thing in detail and progress through it and find where man is going to progressively be sanctified and grow in the faith. It's going to be in the next life, resurrection body. Let's keep moving. To, car, to compare John 3, 19 to 21. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world and men love the darkness rather than the light for their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear of his deeds will be exposed. But the one thing, the truth comes to the light so that his deeds may be manifested as having been accomplished by God. So man, under his own auspices, being evil, cannot have fellowship with the holy God who is absolute righteousness unless God provides Ah, oh, the wherewithal to account each man moment to moment to be as righteous as God is, so that what that individual does in the moment can be manifested as righteous, having been accomplished by God. Isn't that where the grace of God works in? Progressive sanctification? No. God's grace provides forgiveness by his grace when you admit wrongdoing. Not when you do something really excellent, because it's not going to be excellent. It's going to be have, uh, has, has some flaws in it. John 8, 12. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me is, will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of light. Provision has to be made for that by God's grace, right? The phrase, I am the light of the world, he follows me. Well, not he who follows me. will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of light in the sense of believing in Jesus Christ for eternal life. How many verses do you have there? And many more throughout the whole Bible. And then, following what Jesus taught about conducting oneself in the temporal life to receive blessings, be provided with a true purpose in life, and consequently add eternal value to that temporal life in the form of eternal rewards. Now, the opposite is true that those who that do not follow Jesus' teaching by neither believing in him for eternal life nor following his teaching would be walking in the darkness of evil, the opposite of what the light of the world, Jesus Christ, was all about. So we have the absolute impossibility to achieve in our temporal life activity that would be representative of the light the perfect light of God. But keep reading, we'll get solution. John 12, 28 to 37. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came out of heaven. I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. So the crowd of people who stood by and heard it were saying that it had thundered. Others were saying, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice has not come for my sake, but for your sakes. Now judgment is upon the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out, and I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death by which he was to die. Up on the cross. The crowd then answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ is to remain forever. And how can you say, The Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? read in the book of Daniel, 
these guys, <clears throat> these guys are supposed to be experts in the Old Testament, and are looking to throw rocks at him out of their ignorance, their unwillingness to accept and believe the truth. So Jesus said to them, For a little while longer the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light, characterized by God's absolute righteousness. How do you get that? By the grace of God, purified against... Uh, if, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us these sins and purify us you from all unrighteousness, as if you were a son of light, in your experience, for the moment, till you sin again. These things Jesus spoke, and he went away and hid himself from them. But though he had performed so many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him. So by believing in the light, the Son of Man, the Christ, a moment of faith, and one has become a son of light, in position, implying having possession of eternal life, having an eternal fellowship with the light, Jesus Christ. Eternal, but not moment-to-moment -moment temporal. So 1 John 1, 5 says that God is light, and in the sense that he reveals himself in and to his creation, and in so doing, he reveals the wickedness that is found in creation in all men, which is completely set apart who he is, from who he is. Thus, it is in the very nature of who God is that man is inevitably exposed by the light of God as falling far short of his moral glory. The second phrase, 1 John 1, 5, is a negative corollary to the phrase, first phrase, God is light. The second phrase is rendered, and in him is no darkness at all. The Greek literally says, and darkness is not in him, none. It has two negatives to make the message very emphatic. Although there are those who contend that there is darkness and evil in God, 1 John 1, 5b says emphatically that there is absolutely no darkness, evil in God at all. In the paganism of the day, there was a mythology about the gods reflecting a capriciousness and willingness to do harm. Others contend that evil, as well as good, originated from the Creator, and so moral distinctions were invalid. But according to and throughout all of Scripture, which has no contradictions on this matter, and according to the experience of the apostles who saw and heard him, touched him, listened to him, the word of life, Jesus Christ, who is God, their accounts having been written down with the contra without contradictions, in this matter there is no evil in God, only absolute righteousness. Deuteronomy 32, 3-4. 32, 3. For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just, a God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. In Isaiah 45, 21. Declare and set forth your case. Indeed, let them consult together. Who has announced this from of old? Who has long since declared it? Is it not I, the Lord, and there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior? There is none except me. Jehovah Witnesses. I talked to a guy about that, and he walked away, couldn't answer it. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even, their un even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe, for there's no distinction. For all have sinned and sh fall short of the glory of God. So where is progressive sanctification? being justified as a gift by his gift, grace, through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in his blood through faith. This was to, dem to demonstrate his righteousness because in the forbearance of God he passed over the sins previously committed, previous time. So they went to paradise, even though they didn't get the, their sins paid for until the first century. Notice that the righteousness of God has been witnessed to in Scripture, the Law and the Prophets, which righteousness is received only by an individual through a moment of faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, in his propitiation in his blood, in his atoning sacrifice for sins. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory, the absolute righteousness of God, and consequently have no righteousness of their own. The fact that God is light and in him is no darkness is testified to in Old Testament Scripture without the slightest contradiction throughout. This is corroborated 
for the non-contradictory written accounts 